I'm Deborah Shihara and this is Talking Work. Inflation is on everyone's minds these days and we've been thinking about how it impacts employees, but particularly those on the minimum wage. Some governments have put in place rules to ensure wages keep pace with inflation and these are called automatic wage indexation mechanisms. Emanuela Nespoli, partner in Eusebaris Italy and head of our expert group on pay and benefits, along with Alexander Ulrich, partner in Eusebaris Germany, had a really interesting discussion about this recently and we'll play that for you now. Welcome to Talking Work, the employment law podcast by Use Laboris. In each episode, we invite a different guest to discuss what's happening in the world of work. If you're an HR professional of any kind, this podcast is for you. Today's podcast focuses on inflation and its effects, which is not, at first sight, a strictly employment law theme. But as Emanuela will explain, inflation can deeply affect employment policy and legislation. Am I right? Yes. Actually, the global economy has been subjected to multiple crises during the last several years. Tightened financial conditions and restrictive measures triggered loss and damage in many markets and sectors. And the labor market was no exception. From Youth Laboris research on global economic trend and wage indexation, it emerged that between 2015 and 2019, the five-year average global inflation rate had been 3.16%, whilst in 2022, is soared to 8.8%. This clearly has a significant effect on real wages. A possible solution could be wage indexation as a way of keeping salaries and social benefits in line with inflation, and in particular, applying wage indexation to minimum wages. But first, what are minimum wages? Minimum wages uh, have been defined by the International Labour Organization as the minimum amount of remuneration uh, that an employer is required to pay wage earners uh, for the work performed during a given period, which cannot be reduced by collective agreement or an individual contract. Who sets minimum wages and is everywhere the same? Countries uh, tend to set uh, minimum wages levels uh, that vary between, based on age, uh, occupation, sectors, uh, skill level, uh, region and or uh, disadvantaged target groups uh, within the labour market. And so it's ca- each country is different. The role of social partners uh, in determining the minimum wage also differs uh, significantly, ranging from uh, a non-existent uh, or insignificant consultation role uh, all the way to a role that binds uh, a government to implement uh, whatever they agree. The EU tries to harmonize things as far as possible, but are the frag- rules fragmented in Europe too? Well, actually, a directive uh, was issued uh, recently in Europe. Uh, I mean, Directive uh, 2022-2041, that aims to improve uh, the living and working conditions uh, of all workers in the EU and to promote economic and social progress without interfering with the freedom of the member states to choose between setting minimum wages by law or promoting protection through collective agreements. The directive applies to all workers within the EU with an employment contract and focuses on establishing clear procedures within member states to set an adequate wage for EU workers. In particular, the text introduces an obligation on the EU countries to set up a reliable monitoring system, as well as uh, controls and inspections on the ground, to ensure compliance and combat abusive subcontracting, fake self-employment, unregistered overtime, or increase labor intensity. Back to inflation, Emanuela, you mentioned wage indexation. Yes. By that I mean linking wages to price developments. The precise form of wage indexation varies depending on the company or sector. Which countries regulate wages using indexation? According to a recent study conducted by EU's laborious law firms across the world, data from 27 countries shows that only two countries, Luxembourg and Belgium, have automatic wage indexation mechanism. Five out of the 27 countries in the private sector. 
Is wage indexation always a good idea? In a recent report, uh, the OECD outlined a few side effects uh, of automatic weight indexation. We have also experienced uh, uh, this in Italy with the so-called, uh, I mean, <laughs> sorry, escalator, that means uh, scala mobile, uh, an automatic mechanism that uh, assessed uh, salaries based on, based on the cost of living. This system was applied in Italy between the 40s and the end of the 80s. It received a lot of criticism because wages were increased based solely on inflation without considering other factors, such as increasing in productivity and GDP. So what's your conclusion about all this, Emanuela? Minimum wages uh, can have a big impact on wages uh, at the bottom of the distribution pool and uh, can also help uh, in preserving the purchase power of low-wage uh, workers. Especially in times of high inflation, minimum wages uh, need to be regularly revised to ensure that they maintain their usefulness as a policy instrument. However, Minimum wages, uh, whether statutory or negotiated, um, should be seen only as a part of a broader policy package. In order to be more effective, it is essential that minimum wage policies be coordinated with tax and benefit policies in order to ensure that increases in the statutory value of the minimum wage translate into higher take-home pay while limiting the rise in labor cost for employers. Hope you found that discussion useful. We wrote a report recently on wage indexation and we've put a link to that in the notes of this episode. We've put in Manuela's and Alexander's details in there too and mine are there as well. You're always welcome to contact me on anything to do with employment law and I'll answer your query or if you need an expert in a particular country, say, I'll put you in touch with the right person. Do browse around our website, by the way. There's loads of information there on all sorts of employment-related topics at usaboris.com. Thanks for listening and join us again. That's it for this episode of Talking Work, but we'll be back very soon with more insights from our guests from around the world. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can also visit usaboris.com to access all our content resources and tools.